Well, what's up guys? Scap here, coming at you again with part two of my Gilbert Arenas piece. And if you did miss part one, it is linked in the description below along with the original unedited three and a half hour video. But to catch you up briefly, if you did miss that first part, I, me, that guy, recently went on the MJFB content creators panel and much to my surprise, Gil Arenas decided to grace us with his presence. And while I was very thankful to have him on, I attempted to get to the heart of his take on one of the most egregious and pitiful takes, not just in basketball, but plaguing us in the entire world today. Of course, I'm talking about Kobe versus LeBron. And in particular, why, how, and when did LeBron actually jump Kobe? In order to get to the heart of it, I felt that it was important to get Gil to define just what greatness meant to him. And this is what he said. Um, the way they dominated the game, um, offensively, defensively, um, how they played the game, um, the fear factor. And despite the fact that Kobe checks all of those boxes easily, in my estimation, over LeBron, as does the vast majority of Kobe and LeBron's peers feel that way. For whatever reason, Gil, who allegedly is a big Kobe fan, has LeBron over Kobe. You know, Jordan's my GOAT, right? You know, just like, you know, most of everybody. Uh, LeBron James is second, Kobe's third. Let's see if he can make sense of it for us. Why, you played against them both. What, and what is, why do you elevate LeBron over Kobe Bryant? Many of your peers would disagree with you. Lots of people that went against both will put Kobe Bryant over LeBron. Why do you think different? Um, you know, I'm, uh, Kobe's my favorite player. Um, we're giving him credit for, he looked the closest to Mike. Well, he looked the closest to Mike and, you know, the back end of Mike's career, right? The second three peak. He didn't look like Mike in 84 to 91. He did not look like that dude, right? Uh, he looked like Michael Jordan, uh, second three peak era, right? Um, the Kobe eight didn't look nothing like any of the Mikes, right? He had his own style, but they had the killer instinct. They had the one-on-one -on -one play. They had the the, the willingness to take the team on their back. And that's what we give Kobe credit for because that was the first time that we seen a player with that caliber when we when we coined Mike as the guy, right? Before Mike, that wasn't a thing. So when we seen Mike do what Mike did, we identified that is what greatness is. And we've been judging everybody to that ever since, right? So. LeBron being the face of a team, being the face of the league, and he can't take the end of the game shots. He doesn't have the one-on-one -on -one skill, right? Right. So Gil can't even answer the question. When pushed on why he has LeBron over Kobe, he initially talks only about Kobe, then trails off as to why LeBron doesn't stack up to Kobe. The conversation would then get hijacked on some rambling load management and steroid dissertation for approximately 45 minutes. But being wholly unsatisfied with that original weak ass answer by Gil, I decide to go back in on him. Gil, I wanna ask you a legitimate question here. I wanna ask you a follow up. I did not get a satisfactory response to my answer earlier from you and I, I do respect you taking the time and hopping on, but I have to get an answer to this because one of the basketball takes that has annoyed me the most, this is scap attack here. One of the basketball takes that has plagued me my entire life, I'm a few years younger than you. I watched Kobe Bryant and LeBron James, their entirety of their careers. You mm -hmm. mentioned you mentioned in your, in your answer as to what makes someone the GOAT or what makes someone great to you is their ability to dominate and impact both sides of the ball. Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant is one of three players in NBA history to make at least 10 All-NBA first teams and 10 All-NBA defensive selections. Him, Tim mm -hmm. Duncan, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that's it. Gil, Kobe Bryant led an NBA decade in scoring, in points per game, in points averaged, and he made nine All-NBA defensive teams during that span. 
He went to seven championships and he won five back to back without a single other top 75 player. Has LeBron ever dominated a season to that degree? Have we seen LeBron take relatively little help? Because say what you will about Pau Gasol. He is not a top 75 player. He was a one-time All-Star with zero All-NBA team selections through seven years when he arrived in LA. Kobe took that, went to three straight NBA championships, one back-to-back, and dominated the playoffs against 50-win opponents at every level. Have we ever seen LeBron reach that peak? Have we ever seen it to the degree that you can justify putting him above Kobe Bryant, who did it at a high level at both ends of the floor while winning challenging championships? Well, you got to say longevity, right? Plays a part, right? It plays a part. Um, no, it you're you're no. saying the teams LeBron, LeBron James took to the championship were, were talented? More so than anything Kobe Bryant had in the second iteration of his career when he went so, to three so straight on, on back to back. Yes. So on his team, who was as good as uh, Paul Gasol on his team? Can y'all hear me Anthony now? Anthony Davis finished seventh hang in on, MVP on. voting that year. Look, Anthony Davis. That, 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 no, we're, talking, MVP we're, talking, we're, talking, we're talking about Anthony. So you're talking about recent. The conversation would then inevitably get hijacked again when someone brought up Anthony Davis's name. While I desperately fought to get back in the conversation as it devolved into some screaming tirade. We guys, did not please get a, care. Please get a word in here on this. Guys, free, my hold, man. Don't we did hold not. On. We did not care, and he did not play for free. He played for fifty. But I am finally able to regain some footing here. Robin, please let me jump in here. I'm not <laughs> talking about Anthony Davis, Gil. I'm not talking about the Lakers. Let's take a look at LeBron's greatest championship ever. You know, the one that made him the goat in his own mind. The 2016 3-1 comeback against the 73-9 Warriors. Kevin Love on that team was the third option for that 2016 Cavs team. The year prior, the year before he joined up in Cleveland, Kevin Love was in his mid-20s. He was second mm -hmm. team All-NBA. He averaged 24 points, 13 rebounds, and four assists. At the time, it was the only such line in NBA history. He was top five that season in PER, win share, BPM, VOR. Kevin Love was an undisputed top 10 player the year before he went to Cleveland and became the third option on a team that included Kyrie Irving. That team is the team that I'm talking about. He had far more help than Pal, the, the Pal Gasol, Lamar so would you, would, would you take, would you? So would you take Kevin Love over Pal Gasol? Pro, but at the time that Pal Gasol <laughs> went to LA in his seventh year and the time that Kevin Love went in his sixth year to join up in Cleveland, unequivocally, yes. Look at the tail. Did you say seventh year? Hold on. Pal Gasol was in his seventh NBA season when he was traded to LA in 2008. And Gil again has no answer here, starts frantically Googling things, only to find out, of course, everything I am saying is checking out. So then, of course, in a desperate attempt to try to justify his garbage take on LeBron over Kobe, he, like countless other LeBron jock sniffers, falls on the tired and trusted Shaq carried Kobe crutch. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Love was, Kevin Love was in his sixth NBA yeah. season. Gil, look. Pal Gasol was a one-time All-Star in 2008. Yeah. No All-NBA teams. Kevin Love was a two-time All-NBA second team selection by the sixth year with Minnesota when he went to join. Remember, Gil, they traded away the first <laughs> overall pick in Cleveland to bring on Kevin Love. Can I, can Kevin I, ask, Love, you one, can I ask Jay one question? Wait, so, wait. Kevin so, Love had a rebound in title, too. Don't forget about that. So, so if we're gonna if we're gonna use that, so so Kobe has five rings, right? Correct. Three of the rings, he wasn't the lead dog. So if we take those three away and then go against Shaquille, uh, against LeBron's four. Gil, what how are we defining you lead dog? Just, just let me give you a real quick overview of Kobe's, two <laughs> ring, of Kobe's three rings with Shaquille. Let me give you a real quick overview. In, in four finals runs with Shaq, man. 
<laughs> in four finals runs with Shaq, because Shaq God and Kobe damn, went man. to four NBA finals. This guy. Mm -hmm. Shaq averaged one more point per game than Kobe in the four mm -hmm. playoff runs that presented finals appearances for the Lakers. Kobe led the NBA playoffs in clutch time scoring. He led not only the Lakers, he led the NBA playoffs in clutch time scoring in those in that three-peat. He was all NBA defense first or second team. He was the leading assist player on the Lakers and the lead ball handler and facilitator. Are we really sure that Kobe was not just a co-best player? Are we sure that people like you that like to present Kobe in revisionism as a Robin or as a to a second option? Are we sure that it wasn't a Batman? People like me, I, didn't, I, didn't I say Kobe is the, my is my favorite player of all time? You did, but I still like justification of why LeBron James is above him. And this has been bothering me for 20 years of how and when. See, this is why I don't like the LeBron see, we can, we can use, Listen, listen. We can, Kobe. See, that's why, that's why I say we, you, you argue for who you like versus arguing for somebody else. So again, Gil just cannot answer why LeBron is over Kobe but ultimately is caught in his own elaborate web of lies before falling into the perfectly laid trap and essentially admitting LeBron just doesn't match up with Kobe. You, you said, you said, you said it. You said Kobe was a closer. But the last five minutes, the star takes over. In today's game, the Lucas, right, the Shays, that wasn't LeBron's skill. That's not LeBron's skill, right? That's why he wasn't successful at the end until he got someone who could do that. Then for good measure, we get into some more player movement stuff and really nestle in to the softest, most pathetic move in NBA history, this side of KD's West Coast jump. This goal, if it, the I team does it, not want to win, what do does the anything, player man. do? What I don't have the the question. Question. I begrudge him for the decision he made and the player that he joined. If LeBron what? wanted to leave, God bless. Go and find a better team and get some better supporting castmates. It's Dwayne Wade was, a, was the third best player in the NBA at the time no, that LeBron I, I, left I, I, to I'm, join up with him. No, I, I, listen, I, get, I get the argument about who he teamed up with. That's another discussion. I'm saying just in principle. But ultimately, you guessed it, Gil was, again, unable to actually answer this question other than just posting another extremely long rambling question of his own. Bear with me on this one. If the if you're if you're a star player and you're you're doing what you're doing and your organization aren't writing checks to bring people in, what do you do as that star player? Yeah, I'm actually just going to cut this here because it is a two plus minute question. So I'm just gonna jump right to the crux of his actual point. If look, if LeBron James so he, is great, so he teamed up with two people to kind of give him the leverage a little bit. That's all. Like, that's look, the is, I can't fuck him. Like, it's like you want to fuck him for trying to win his first championship. A if LeBron bit. was that great, that powerful, and had that much pull and influence, why couldn't he say, oh, go to New York, who is a massive media mecca, and probably uh -huh. it, it is, it's the big, hold on, it's the biggest empire for basketball outside of maybe arguably LA. Why could uh -huh. he not get on the phone with, say, Amari Stoudemire, or maybe Chris Bosh and try to poach him away from Dwayne Wade. Why could he not, why could LeBron not establish his own team with a more competitive supporting cast in a massive media setting like New York, then brought, he could have courted other subsequent free agents in years to come, fortified his team, but he didn't do that. He took the easiest yeah. possible way out. Well, Hold on, was, this is my but, major point. Either. Hold on, this is my major point. It's greatness in basketball and in anything in life and sports and whatever sports are a microcosm for life Gil. and the harder the thing is the harder the obstacles are and the challenges are that you have to overcome the greater you are the better you have to become it take it brings the best out of you lebron has oh. systemically cheated himself from reaching the highest of levels because he has been afraid inherently to go through the hardest and most difficult pathways. Oh. That's why myself and many on this panel oh. and okay. in general don't oh. respect him. I, I get it. Now, if he's a free agent, he's by himself. Okay. All right. 
had LeBron, would you knock him then? It, would you knock him if he went to the Hawks? It, would you knock him if he went to the Boston Celtics? Gilbert, you're you not listening, knock him man. anyway for leaving. No, Gilbert, man, listen, you're not. Man. And just more questions by Gil with no actual answers in sight. But at the end of the day, Gil knows what the scoreboard reads, as does everyone who actually watched all of both of these guys' careers. Just, just, just so we understand, when I say Kobe's my favorite, I, I'm the only person that has all the rings that I got. I got okayed by Kobe Bryant for the five rings. So I can just put him at one if I want to. But I, 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 just, I, I like the sport, dog. I, I like what everybody brings to it. I learned my work at the, from Kobe Bryant himself, right? I want to follow up after this. Yeah. I've learned, I like, when people talk about, like, a madman, he was a f***ing madman. That, that's just, if you say, who was the hardest working human being you've ever seen? It's 100% Kobe Bryant. You're not, you can't talk me off the ledge. I don't, you can throw whatever Jordan did this, it's golf and he smoked cigars and played. I, I seen Kobe do some shit that's never been done before and probably never will. And this here is my fundamental point and issue that I have with this whole LeBron Jordan debate and why it personally annoys the ever loving hell out of me. Kobe is the gatekeeper to Jordan. You don't get to Jordan until you clear Kobe. And LeBron never decisively did that. In fact, no one in NBA history clearly has, except for you know who. And speaking of Jordan, if you did miss that episode one with me and Gil, you can check it out right here. And as always, make sure to subscribe and stay up to date with more from me. Until next time.